So today's video is about how to divide a decimal by a decimal. So again, some important, <clears throat> some important vocabulary for this uh, particular video is divisor. Remember the divisor is the number that is outside the house and it's the number that's actually dividing the dividend into groups. Then you have the dividend which is the number being divided and then you have and that's inside the house and then you have the quotient which is the answer to the division problem and that's on top of the house. So how would division change from what I learned in elementary school? Well the steps for division will be the same. You're going to still divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, start over. However, instead of showing what is left over using a remainder, we'll now show what is left over using a decimal. And the number that goes inside the house will not always be the bigger number. So what do we do if the divisor is not a whole number like in these questions? So if we look at the divisor for each one of these questions, we'll notice that these aren't whole numbers because we have a decimal and then we have a number after the decimal, meaning these are not whole numbers. Well, I'm so glad that you asked. So what do we do if the divisor is not a whole number? What is going on? This is what you do. Are you ready? Let's go. Three, two, one. If you got a problem with a decimal divisor, gotta know how to divide if you're gonna be wiser. First, multiply divisors by a power of ten. If it's got two places, gotta swoop it in again. Make divisors whole numbers, that's what you gotta do. Don't forget the inside decimal, cause you gotta swoop that too. So as you can see, swoop, there it is, swoop, there it is. I know Courtney right, but it gets a point across. So basically, you're going to make the divisor a whole number by swooping or moving the decimal to the end of the number. So let's do some examples. Oh, just a helpful hint. You're going to treat the divisor and dividend like brothers and sisters. Whatever the divisor gets to do, the dividend wants to do the same thing. If the divisor moves its decimal three places to the right, then the dividend wants to move its decimal to three places to the right. If the divisor gets to move its decimal two places to the right, then the dividend wants to move its decimal two places to the right and so on and so on. Because I'm sure if your brother or sister got a new toy, what would you want? You'd want the same thing. Or if your brother and sister got to go to King's Dominion for vacation, you will want to go too. So basically, whatever your brother or sister gets to do, you expect to do the same thing. Well, the divisor and the dividend are the same way. Whatever the divisor gets to do, the dividend wants to do the same thing. So let's look at an example. So we want to find the quotient of 9 and 50 one hundredths divided by 6 tenths. First, we're going to set up the division problem like we would any other problem. So when we set it up, we have to first decide what number is going inside the house and what's going outside. Well, 9 and 50 one hundredths is being divided by 6 tenths. So that means 9 and 50 one hundredths is the dividend. It's what's getting divided. And it's getting divided by 6 tenths. So that makes 6 tenths the divisor. Then your next step is you're going to check to see is the divisor a whole number. So if we look at our divisor, we notice that no, it's not a whole number because we have this decimal. So that means if it's not a whole number, you've got to make it a whole number. You have to turn it into a whole number. And to do that, you simply swoop 
or move the decimal to the end of the number. So I'm going to take this decimal and actually move it all the way to the end of the number and I had to swoop it one time. So like I mentioned before, that divisor and that dividend are like brother and sister. Whatever the divisor gets to do, the dividend wants to do the same thing. So because the divisor got to swoop or move its decimal one place to the right, guess what the dividend wants to do? It wants to do the same thing. It wants to swoop or move its decimal one place to the right. So then after you have moved the decimal, your next step is to bring the decimal up to the top of the house. And then once you bring, up to the, bring it up to the top of the house, now you're just going to continue doing dividing just like we've been doing um, for the last couple days. So I'm going to divide 6 first into 9 and it goes in there one time. 1 times 6 gives me 6. I subtract and I get 3. And then I bring down the 5. Then I divide 6 into 35. 6 goes into 35 5 times. 5 times 6 is 30. I subtract and I get 5. So then the next step is to bring down the 1. Then I divide 6 into 51. It goes in there 8 times. 8 times 6 is 48. I subtract and I get 3. Now keep in mind, I don't have 0 yet, which means I'm not done. That means at this point, if I don't have any other numbers to bring down, I add a 0 to the dividend, bring the 0 down, and then keep dividing. So now I'm going to divide 6 into 30. It goes in there 5 times, and then 5 times 6 is 30. I subtract and I get 0. So now that I have 0 and I have nothing else to bring down, now I've gotten to my final answer. So that means 9 and 50 one hundredths divided by 6 tenths equals 15 and 85 hundredths. So let's do another one. We want to find the quotient of 15 and 3 tenths divided by 2 and 25 hundredths. Again, we're going to set up the division problem just like we would any other division problem. 15 and 3 tenths is being divided by 2 and 25 hundredths. So that means 15 and 3 tenths is our dividend. And that makes 2 and 25 hundredths our divisor. Then again, we're going to check to see is the divisor a whole number? Well, because we have this decimal inside of our number, that means it's not a whole number. So that means we've got to move the decimal to the end of the number. And this time, instead of moving it just one place, we've got to actually move it two places to get it to the end of the number. So we've got to swoop it two places. So then the next thing we want to do is we want to keep in mind that the divisor and the dividend are like brother and sister. So because the divisor gets to move its decimal two places, guess what the dividend wants to do? It wants to move its decimal two places. But notice how I only have one number to hop over. But I still have to move it two places. So that means I hop one, then I hop another one. And because I have this empty hump here, I have to fill it with a zero. So I'm going to have to add a zero in. So if you have to move the decimal more places than you have numbers, it's okay. You just have to put in some zeros. So now that I have put my decimal in the correct spot and I have my zero in there, the next step is to bring the decimal up to the top of the house. Once I bring the decimal up, it's time to begin dividing. Now 225 is not a factor that we know the multiples of easily. So one thing that we do is we can just go ahead and list, list the multiples of 225 all the way from 225 times 1 all the way down to 225 times 9. And then doing this step does make the whole process a little bit easier. So I first want to see, well, can 225 go into 1? Well, we know it can't go into 1. So then we say, can it go into 15? Nope, too big. Can it go into 153? Nope, still too big. Can it go into 1530? Yes. So now we want to look over here and we want to get as close to 1530 as we can without going over. Well, we see 1350 here and then we see 1575 here. We know 1575 is too big, so that means we need to go down to 1350, which means that 225 can go into 1530 six times. And now we want to make sure that we put the six above the zero because we're dividing 225 into 1530. So now I'm going to multiply six times 225, and we see over here it equals 1350. 
Then we subtract them and we get 180. Now keep in mind, we don't have anything to bring down, but we're not at zero yet, so we're not done. So we're actually gonna add another zero to our dividend and we're gonna add it after the decimal. Then we're gonna bring that zero down. Now we're gonna start over. So now we're dividing it. Now we're dividing 225 into 1,800. So again, we're looking over here at our list. We wanna get as close as we can to 1,800 without going over. And we see right here, we actually hit the nail on the head. So we actually have 1,800 right here. So we're gonna divide 225 into 1,800 and it's gonna give us eight. So then eight times 225 is 1,800. We subtract them and we get zero. Now that we're at zero and there's nothing left to bring down, we're finished. So that means 15 and 3 tenths divided by 2 and 25 hundredths equals 6 and 8 tenths. So you want to keep in mind, if the divisor is not a whole number, you're actually going to have to make it a whole number. So you have to think about that very, very corny wrap and swoop the decimal until you get to the end of the number. And whatever you do to the divisor, you have to do the exact same thing to the dividend. Once you do that, you bring the decimal up and then just begin dividing. Don't forget to teach to the tiger.